Hello test takers and welcome back to exam prep solutions and today we're going to be going over a section of the FE manual which is known as mathematics. We're actually going to be going into single variable calculus and doing an overview of some of the concepts there. How to do calculus, maybe you need a refresher uh, here. I'm not, it's not going to be a full comprehensive thing but going over calculus as it relates to the FE exam. So let's get into it. So we're going to talk about uh, the intro to the FE civil mathematics some of the topics that'll be on the FE exam, and then we'll go over some basic calculus concepts and, of course, some example problems. So let's talk about the civil mathematics section. It's the first section on the FE exam. It has four parts, so there's analytic geometry, single variable calculus, vector operations, and then statistics, which covers a wide variety of different topics there. We're going to be going over single variable calculus in this video, which you can argue mathematics is kind of the foundation for the rest of engineering as it relates to design. So a pretty important topic and section. So let's get into single variable calculus. So in, FE, in the FE reference manual, that section begins on page 45 and is a very important uh, topic for you to master. We also want to understand the underlying concepts which will allow you to master more difficult or abstract calculus problems. The differential calculus involves finding the slope of a line or the slope of a line at a given point tangent to the line at a given point. Y prime typically represents the slope of the curve at a specific function f of x, and taking the derivative can help you find the slope at that point or an equation for that slope. So for differential calculus, this is taken from the FE manual for the derivative. For any function y equals f of x, the derivative dxy equals dy dx or y prime, as I just described earlier. Of course, you can use the limit rule to find the derivative. That is a very exhaustive uh, equation to use. So we're going to use our standard methods for taking the derivative here. Inflection points, maximum, and minimums can also be calculated based on the derivative. So you can test for the max, you can test for a min, or you can find inflection points by taking the second derivative of an equation. So let's talk about simple derivatives. What is the principle? So basic rule for uh, the derivative of maybe a simple equation is to bring the power down and subtract that power by one. So for example, if you have x squared, you're going to bring the 2 down, so now it's 2 times x, and then you're going to subtract 1 from the power. So 2 minus 1 raised to the first power, or 2x. So if you have x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x, or 2x raised to the first power, same thing. If you have 3x raised to the fourth, you're going to bring the 4 down. 3 times 4 equals 12, and that's now raised to the third power. So it's 12x raised to the third power would be the answer. And if you have a negative, the same principles apply negative 4x raised to the third, you bring the 3 down, so multiply negative 4 by 3, so now you have negative 12x squared. Now for a negative, um, it would be a similar function as well. These are common uh, trig derivative identities, or just different derivative identities that we find in mathematics. It's not always important to understand exactly why some of these uh, equal the other, especially for the FE exam. Uh, it's just good that this is also in the reference manual, but you can also have them memorized so that you know what they are. So for example, the derivative, derivative of sine equals cosine, the derivative of cosine equals negative sine, derivative of tangent equals secant squared, and so on. You probably have me memorized these in a mathematics class, but I, like I said before, it's not important to know exactly why these need to equal each other. Just have them down, and uh, memorization at this point is probably key. So what is another derivative rule that we can use? Well. This one is called the product rule. And when I learned this, typically we'd, we would use the phrase 1d2 plus 2d1 to help us memorize how to solve these certain derivatives. So you can see the official notation down there. But just remember that phrase 1d2 plus 2d1 to help understand how to solve these problems. For example, find the derivative of x sine x plus 4. We know the derivative of 4, or just a whole number, is going to equal 0 since it has no variable associated with it. So now we're just looking at x sine x. We want to remember this principle, 1d2 plus 2d1. So 1, which was x, that's the first term. So 1 and 2 are referring to the different terms here. The first term is x, the second term is sine x. So 1x d2, so it's multiplying actually, so d2 meaning derivative of the second term. So x times the derivative of the second term, so the der derivative of sine x equals cosine x, plus 2, so sine x, d1, the derivative of just x is 1. So you can apply this principle, 1d2 plus 2d1, 
to solve this final derivative. So the final answer would be x cosine x plus sine x. Hopefully that makes sense there. But as long as you remember that principle, you can use it in any equation. Now what is the quotient rule? The quotient rule is a little more complicated, but can be applied in the same way. It's low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below, right? These are just nursery rhyme-esque uh, things to help you memorize how to solve these. I still use them to this day, right? So low, you're going to take the low term, multiply it by the derivative of the high term, then subtract that by the high term times the derivative of the low term, then put that all over the square of the, of the term that was on the bottom. So for this problem, 2x squared divided by 10x, you would then go uh, low d high, so low 10x times the derivative of the high term, so the derivative of 2x squared equals 4x minus high 2x squared times the derivative of the lower term, because low d high minus high d low, so that would just be 10 over the entire thing, the square of what's below, so that would just be 10x squared. So you end up with an answer of 40x squared minus 20x squared over 100x squared in this case. So then you could get 20x squared over 100x squared and further reduce that if you would like. But that's how the principle applies with the quotient rule. Then there is another rule known as L'Hopital's rule. If the fractional function f of x over g of x assumes one of the intermediate forms of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, where infinity is finite or infinite, then the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over gx allows you to then take the derivative of the top and bottom function to find the limit. So this is often used uh, in certain limit functions as well. We're not going to go in depth into L'Hopital's rule, but keep that one in mind um, when solving your certain derivatives. So to recap here, we are able to go through simple derivatives, understanding your trigonometric derivatives and memorizing those or referring to them in the FD manual, using the product rule, rule 1d2 plus 2d1, then the quotient rule, low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below. These are going to be the derivatives that are going to be found on the FE exam. It really doesn't get more complicated than these. So as long as you remember these four rules, you should be able to solve 95% of the derivatives you find on the FE exam. So that is an overview of the single variable calculus section. Let me know in a comment if you have any questions or any other section of the FE exam you would like me to cover or any other sample problems you'd like to see on the channel. We also have our free guide, how to solve any FE exam problem in five steps. You can find that guide in the description down below, just tell us where to send it. Make sure to check your email after signing up so that you can see when you get that guide. So thank you so much for watching. And anyways, I'll see you guys next time.